Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at GPS. This episode specifically, we're going to talk about GPS on your smartphone. Now, while the GPS devices have been around for a number of years, they tend to be single-use devices. While they might be able to double as your speakerphone or maybe have a little bit of multimedia playback, for the most part, they're strictly GPS and navigation devices. And while you're spending a couple hundred dollars on that, it may not seem like the best use of your money. Now, thankfully, GPS has been made available into smartphones. So a lot of these phones now have a little GPS unit built inside to help you with moving the phone around and uh, location-based services like Foursquare, that sort of thing. But the GPS device included in this has also made it possible now to buy applications uh, that serve as GPS replacements. And this is especially true now that these devices have fairly large, uh, high-quality screens that double in place of the old-school devices that were dedicated to GPS. When the phones had smaller screens, it wasn't quite as good a replacement. One really nice thing about having GPS on a smartphone is that you have access to the cellular network, being a cell phone and all, and access to Wi-Fi networks, which can help you with something called assisted GPS. Now, assisted GPS not only can use these other networks to help refine your position, even when you do have a view of the sky and the satellites, but it can actually use those things if you don't have a view of the sky and you don't have access to the satellites. So it can triangulate your position just using cell phone networks. Now, the big reason that smartphones like the iPhone and Android are more legitimate replacements for GPS devices that are dedicated is that they tend to be more robust these days. Better processing power means better ability to run these very intensive map-based applications. Now, many of the manufacturers of dedicated GPS hardware have come out with applications for use on smartphones like iPhone and Android. You can go to the iTunes App Store to look for various options available for the iPhone, and you can look for things, again, on the Android Marketplace. Now, more recent versions of the Android operating system come with a built-in app called Navigation, which does a lot of what these other dedicated apps will do. So you don't actually have to spend a lot of money to do this if you have the right Android phone. This application does offer turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which is something missing from the Maps application on the iPhone, which is the one that you get for free on the iPhone. And it also allows you to use voice recognition to speak the name of your destination. Now, on the iPhone, you do have access to the free built-in Maps application, which does allow you to locate yourself on the map using geolocation and the GPS. And it does allow you to do directions from one place to the other, but it doesn't actually give you turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which is why you'd probably want to go up to something like a TomTom -tom or a Magellan application on your iPhone if you do really want to have turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the iPhone. We've chosen to go with the TomTom application here. It's a bit pricey compared to a lot of the other apps in the App Store, but when you compare it to the price of a dedicated GPS, it actually is quite a bargain. The one that we downloaded has maps for the US and Canada in it. You can get different uh, versions of the application for different parts of the world. We also have in this one the ability to get live traffic for an additional $19.99 per year for the US only, unfortunately. Now, when you're downloading one of these GPS navigation applications, you'll probably want to download it on the Wi-Fi network or by downloading it to your computer and then transferring it over via the USB cable. That's because these applications typically have a lot of map information in them and are often over a gigabyte, sometimes over two gigabytes, which can take a huge bite out of your uh, monthly data plan if you choose to do it over data, and it will often take a lot longer to do so. Now, it's really important to note that when you're using GPS on a smartphone that it runs your battery down quickly. Unlike another application that may only pull the network occasionally, this is constantly looking for the satellites, and it is very battery intensive. So you'll probably want to power it up when you're using it in your car. Now, the good news is there are a lot of car docks dedicated for just this application. For example, the TomTom -tom application we have also has an accessory that goes with it that takes the iPhone in it and powers it up on the bottom using this connection that has a USB connector on the side of the dock and something to go into your cigarette lighter to keep it powered. There's also on the side of it a place to connect your speakers so that you can actually have better quality sound going out from the iPhone itself into your car audio system. Now, if you're looking for a less expensive option, or maybe something that's not dedicated to the iPhone, you can look at something like the window seat from Griffin. It's a little clip that holds your iPhone in place, even if it is inside another uh, carrying case, which is not always the case when you're using a dedicated option. But it can also hold something like the Android phone. It has a uh, bar here that keeps it into place, and you can push it down to lock the Android into place. And you can even make it uh, smaller if you're using something even more small, like the Palm Pre, for example. Now, when you're using an option like the window seat, it often doesn't come with power included in the box to keep the price down, but they often do leave the places where you would attach power free. So you can actually use a separate connector, like maybe the Griffin Power Duo Micro, and attach that to your cigarette lighter and attach it to the bottom of your iPhone to keep things powered up. 
Now, as always, when you're using a cell phone or a GPS type device inside your car, you want to make sure that you're complying with all hands-free regulations inside your jurisdiction. Even though it is mounted using a device that you can get legally inside your jurisdiction, that doesn't mean that it is legal to actually tap away at it and operate it while the car is in motion. You will want to pay attention to that, otherwise you could get a pretty big ticket. Anyways, that's a look at using GPS on your smartphone. Don't forget to check out the other parts in this series. And for the show notes on this and the other parts in the series, you can go to butterscotch.com.